On Sunday, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers beat the Green Bay Packers 38 to 10. And uh, there's a lot of reasons that this game went sideways for the Packers. But first, I want to point out that by far, this is the best game that Tampa Bay has played all year. When they lost to the Bears on a Thursday night game, week five, I said that Tampa, after that game, was not disciplined enough, or at least did not look disciplined enough in that game to win a Super Bowl. Like, not at all. Not even nearly at all. Because penalties have been a huge problem all year for the Buccaneers. Now, on Sunday, Tampa suddenly, bam, they looked like a Super Bowl team. What's the big difference there? Well, they didn't have a single penalty the entire game. They had one moment where Adamakin Sue was called for a penalty at the end of the first half. It was actually on the same play that the Packers were called for penalties, so they were offsetting penalties. But technically, there was not a single penalty called against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers the entire game. And that is such a big amount of progress for a team that's really, really struggled with discipline all year. And it feels like Tampa must have gotten their act together to some degree. So we learned what the Buccaneers are capable of on a really good day. Tom Brady was fairly good. He had two touchdowns. He had an incredible start to the game. Tom Brady started like 15 for 17 passing. Like really, really efficient, good game to start off. Gronk was awesome. Tom Brady and Rob Gronkowski looked like the connection they had in New, uh, New England. They looked really, really good together. This is the first game I've watched Gronk and gone, ah, there he is. Gronk is back. And uh, dude had five catches, 78 yards, and a touchdown. Now, the Packers made oh, a number of mistakes, uh, and that really made the game go from, I think what would have been a Packers loss became a Packers blowout because of the mistakes the Packers made down the stretch. It should not be forgotten, though, at the end of the first quarter in this game, the Packers were dominating. They were up 10 to nothing, and don't forget, I guess, my point that the Packers were in this game at a point in the, for a moment. Now, in the second quarter... The Buccaneers went off. They had 28 unanswered points. Uh, they went on to win 38 to 10. So what happened here? Why did things change? And Aaron Rodgers threw back-to-back -back interceptions. That's what really blew this game wide open. That led to the Buccaneers two touchdowns early on. One was a pick six. Another gave the Buccaneers the ball at the two-yard line. And after those two interceptions, Aaron Rodgers just could not recover. And I almost wondered because Aaron Rodgers... Very much, very much takes pride in not throwing interceptions. He's known as the guy, wow, Aaron almost never throws a pick. And I wondered at a, for a moment if the guy felt maybe embarrassed or what was going on. Now, A-Rod kept fighting. He had a, I think a third and 18 he converted where he stepped up in the pocket, was moving around. A there, was no, there was no point where Aaron Rodgers was so embarrassed he wanted to get out of the building. But he also made a number of mistakes that... You just do not see Aaron Rodgers make. I mean, he had he really should have had three interceptions. And uh, Antoine Winfield Jr. dropped a pick in his hands. That was costly. He there was a play where A. Rod just missed Mercedes Lewis wide open over the middle. I've never seen Aaron miss a throw like that. I went, what what's going on here? It's very very weird. Uh, he even lost track of the play clock at one point, and Aaron took a delay of game penalty. My point is that. Aaron Rodgers was off. Now, it's also worth noting that on both interceptions he threw, he was throwing the ball to Devontae Adams, who was coming back from an injury. It's Devontae Adams' first game after uh, not playing for a while because of an injury. And he looked off, too. He had a, a moment where, along the sideline, it appeared like Devontae Adams had no idea where he was. His foot was off. He stepped out of bounds. And you're like, okay, I think the guy just needs reps to get back into the swing of things. And um, I'll be honest, I want to see a rematch between these two football teams because if we could get Packers, Buccaneers in the playoffs moving forward, I, I feel like we're going to get a much better game. Because in this game on Sunday, the Buccaneers played their absolute very best game. They hit their ceiling. And Green Bay seems to have hit their floor. They played their absolute worst. And so this was a rare occasion, in my opinion, where we saw... Buccaneers maxing out. Packers terrible. You also have to remember that the Packers lost their left tackle, David Bakhtiari, mid-game due to an injury. And I guess we learned what the Buccaneers are capable of on their best day. But I doubt we're going to see another game for the Packers this bad all year. This was their worst performance in a long, long time. I can't remember the last time I saw Aaron Rodgers throw 
two interceptions, let alone three interception-worthy throws. Uh, he lost track of the clock. He missed the guy wide open. I just, I've never seen Aaron Rodgers play that way in my entire life, and uh, he just was off. And I think the interceptions rattled him. But you're never going to see that again from Aaron Rodgers or the Packers, not for a long, long time. And I also think it's worth pointing out that while Tom Brady may be the star of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the key to their team is their defense. Tom Brady won for so long in New England because he had good weapons around him, had a lot of good help, good structure, and a great defense. Tom Brady and the Buccaneers need a great defense. They had one on Sunday. That's got to continue if Tampa Bay wants to win a Super Bowl. Remember, the Super Bowl is at home this year, and so we could get— I think a really fun, interesting Super Bowl would be Tampa Bay, Tom Brady versus the Patrick Mahomes-led Kansas City Chiefs. I think it would be really interesting. But in order for that to happen, remember, the key to Tampa Bay, it's not Tom Brady. It's their defense. Their defense needs to play very, very well, and they have to avoid costly, embarrassing, bad penalties. If they play clean and their defense plays good, the Buccaneers are a team to watch out for for a long way down the stretch this year.